Hello, this is H.G. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy II! Since last time, I finished farming up to the 400 gil I needed to, well, buy something here at the port town of Poth. Only took me a couple minutes, so not too bad. Let's see. Oh, well, at least we know where the other towns are in this region of the world. Not under our jurisdiction, apparently. Okay, how's it going? Oh, yeah, we heard about that guy. So, yeah, you see the airship flying around the world? Well, that was it. And he can give us a ride to various locations as well. So we don't have to get into random battles or anything like that. Oh, yeah, we heard something about that. Maybe we should check it out. Well, first, let's make our rounds here first. Do they even sell anything different here? I forget if they do. Let's see. No, they don't sell anything different here, so... Nothing I'm worried about there. I think all their wares in the different shops are the same as Paloom. But, uh, yeah, I've seen it flying around everywhere. Oh, okay. Well, I would think he would need, like, a crew or something to help out with that, but okay. But all right, so just like with pa or Paloom, if you talk to the guy here, you can get a ride on the boat. But you notice he's saying that it takes, the boat will take us to Poth, even though we're already there. That's because I didn't get a ride on the boat to get over here. So if I paid him the money to get a ride on the boat, I would have to go all the way back to Plume in order to do that, at least in this version of the game. So yeah, don't do that. I mean, you want to walk here, but don't, you know, pay for a ride thinking you can get back really fast. No, no, it doesn't work that way. Okay, I think all the guys around here at the bar say the same thing, unless they have a different spite here. Hey, hey, Sid, how's it going? Well, let's see what we got here with him. Oh, well, they seem to beg to differ there. But all right. Oh, right. Well, he didn't seem like he's really behind you, but... Okay. Wait a minute, what did he say? Oh, well, I don't believe you, Sid. There's only a limited number of locations he can take us. And, well, in this version of the game, we only have four of them. Although, I think in some of the remakes, they have additional locations you can fly to. But for now, this is all we've got. I would not use it for the first three there. The distance is not that extraordinary. Not worth the amount of money at this point either. But I do want to show something off if you decide to go to Keshawan relatively early in the game. Don't do what I'm about to do, viewers, because I'm just doing this just to show you something and then we'll reset or yeah, reload the save file and uh, what is, well, continue on normally, but I want to show you another way that you can become obscenely overpowered at this point in the game. If you uh, fly to Kashuan, well, we got uh, some slightly stronger enemies, but I don't want to bother with them because I'm just going to reset anyway. So let's get out of here. Oh, this could be bad. I'm surprised we can't run from this one. Maybe this is one of those... Uh, oh, there we go. Okay. I was thinking it was one of those battles that was like guarding a chest and its contents or something. Because those battles are usually can't run. And if you run into them as a random battle, you still can't run from them anyway. But, no, no. We got it. Okay, so over here we got this little forest area straight south of Kashuan. And it's Chocobo's Forest. So the chocobo around here will teleport around and hide and disappear in the grass. All you gotta do in order to catch one is just keep on pressing the A button as you're walking around until you catch it. Then get on top, press the A button, and we're good to go. Yeah, that's all they got to the chocobo theme at this point in the series here. I think it's the first instance of Chocobos appearing in Final Fantasy games. 
So the reason why I wanted to get the chocobo is, well, as you can see, while you're riding it, you can't get into any random battles, and that includes a very specific location that I want to go to. I can't quite make it all the way there with the chocobo, but it should be good enough to uh, get me close enough to get the job done. So let's see. I think I got to go this way. Ah, yeah, there's the lake by Finn there. So we want to go mostly south and a little west of Finn there. Go around here. Now, the enemies around here would be really, really powerful. Like, way more powerful than we've ever met up with, even in areas we're not supposed to go to yet. So what I want to do is let's make a backup save here. Then go forward a few steps. Okay, that ought to be good. Let's make another one. Because chances are I'm going to get into a battle that I might not be able to run away from. Or I could make it all the way without a peep. Hooray! So yeah, this is a very advanced town in the game. So advanced that the NPCs have dialogue that would spoil the plot at this point. So yeah, don't talk to them. But they do have really powerful... Well, everything <laughs> around me, really. So, let's see what we got here. As far as weapons go, they all are really, really powerful. Let's see. Power Staff would be pretty nice. Got a Flame Spear to exploit Fire Elemental Weakness. Ice Spear to exploit Ice. Ogre Killer, I think, is strong against Giant-type enemies, I would think. So, yeah, they've all got... Uh, yeah, way more attack power than we need at this point. If you wanted to buy some of them, well, you'd probably want to farm those tomes from the mages northwest of Finn there. That would be relatively easy. Let's see, at the armor shop here, they got the Thief's Gloves, which are really good. They boost your agility by 10 and have a pretty low equipment weight on them. Let's see, the Knight's Armor and the Giant's Gloves, I think, are... Pretty heavy, though. I would not bother with those right now. The Ice Shield has a lot more evasion than what we've already got. So that would also be good. It also is strong against Fire Elemental attacks. The Giant's Gloves boost your strength by 10, but they just weigh so much, it's not worth it at this point in the game. And over here, yeah, they got a lot of magic shops around here. Almost every one... Well, not every... Well, they got a lot of them. Uh, let's see. Most of them are from towns that I've already been to or am about to go to. But this one has totally new spells. And let's see. Yeah, a lot of them are really good. I'm not going to buy them now, of course. But if you wanted to become obscenely powerful, I'd probably get the Holy Tome there that would help out with a certain boss later in the game. But otherwise, yeah, let's just uh, reset. Oh, yeah, I don't want to go there. I want to go back to where I started here so I have my 400 gil back. Okay, so the reason why I wanted to have the 400 gil is so that way I could buy a shell tome and teach that to Guy. The shell spell works a little differently than it does, well, a lot differently than every other Final Fantasy game. It's not like a status effect that like reduces magic damage or something like that by, by a certain percentage or something. The way it works is for each level of the shell spell you have, it can potentially add that many levels to your magic evasion. So it's basically like Blink, but for magic evasion instead of physical evasion there. The reason I really like Shell is because not only does it protect you against, like, say someone's casting a magic spell on you, you could avoid some number of hits from that spell, or, uh, what is it? The, the really big thing, though, is that it also protects against, or helps protect against uh, physical attacks that can inflict a status ailment on you because even though their accuracy of the hits in the first place check against your physical evasion the status effect or inflicting that status effect checks against your magic evasion so it can protect against both and there's quite a few enemies throughout the game that have 
both a spell that can inflict a status ailment and a physical attack, and Shell can get both of those covered there. So let's get out of here now that I've gotten that taken care of. So these guys could inflict a status ailment on me. So let's go put Shell to use. At this point, the difference with Protect and Shell are pretty negligible if worth if they're worthwhile at all. But I do want to practice them so that way by the time I really need them, they will be ready to go. So yeah, that is the thing, is that if, if you don't know like all the internal mechanics of the game and how Shell works and Protect and stuff, they're going to appear to be pretty darn useless. But if you do know about that, then they get pretty darn useful. And the reason why I first started thinking about using Shell is because later on, at the very late of the game, there's going to be an attack called Mind Blast that is non-elemental and can paralyze your entire party. It is obscenely powerful and annoying to deal with. It's the only non-elemental status spell in the game, or attack, that is, other than, like, a physical attack. Hey, we got our HP. Ooh, and a point of spirit. Nice. So I started thinking about, you know, Shell could help deal with that. And the more I started thinking about, like, other places where I could use Shell, the more I came to want to use it even more than that. So it, it really helps because it's the only way you can really deal with physical status effects as well. Because otherwise, you know, it's just, well, they land whatever hits they do, and if one of them inflicts a status ailment, you're screwed. Whoa! Wow, we got a lot of enemies in this one. Okay, let's see. Hmm, this battle might take quite a while for me to get through with a new enemy, Sasquatch. Let's see, these guys, they have, I think, 20 HP apiece. So they can, they don't have any, like, special attacks or anything. So we can just go with Protect there. And then we'll have Guy join in for some, uh, what is it? Uh, physical attacks, that is, eventually. But, uh, yeah, that little, uh, extra bit of damage could help, or, uh, defense could help Guy out there. Hmm... Yeah, not enough to get the job done there, huh? No, I don't want you to run away. I want to use Thunder on the Sasquatch up front there. And now I'm going to start working on Sap. Or Guy's MP there. So I, th I think I'm about two battles away from where I want to go. Uh, I am heading over to Bass there. Because, well, I want to check it out. See what's going on there. There is a very, very minor thing that you can see there that you won't later on. And besides, I need something to do while I'm grinding up my MP anyway. So, let's see what we got here. Okay, so, for HP, hmm, okay, Maria needs a little more, so let's go like that. That ought to be good. Hmm. Why don't we practice our uh, shell spell a little more there? I like to try and use, at least early in the game, I like to try and use all my spells at least a little bit to some extent. Although with uh, Maria, or well, yeah, I mean with both Maria and Guy, we don't really have very many options. It's just that Guy actually has a physical attack that he could use instead. Okay, let's see. So, yeah, why don't we go with Thunder again? Hopefully, Guy will get his MP gain. If I can get HP while I'm at it, so much the better. Let's see. Okay. Woo! Good money. HP and MP. All right. Let's see. I think I'm going to have Minwu take care of the healing this time around. Because, yeah, we lost quite a bit. And Guy is pretty light on MP there as well by now. Let's see. I would like... Before going into the next dungeon, I would like to get my MP up to about 50. And I'd like to get my HP up to, like... 55 or 60 there so that way I can survive one of the bosses for or, um, more powerful attacks there okay so now I want to work on Maria's MP there 
but these guys could take a little while for me to take down. So let's see. I also want to work on my HP if I can. MP is really the higher priority at this point. I will have plenty of opportunities to work on my MP. Or I mean my HP, that is. I might naturally get an HP gain just from, you know, normal battles and all that. But all right. Hmm, that's quite a lot of MP to lose there. I'm a little concerned about that, but... Well, at least we killed the one guy, so we should probably be able to kill the other two without losing too much MP for Maria there. And for now, I'm only casting Shell on Guy there, because if I multi-targeted it, it would drastically reduce the accuracy of it, and probably wouldn't do anything at all. Although, at this point, it probably doesn't really matter, but... Uh, eventually, once I get up to, like, level 5 or 6, then I can start thinking more about multi-targeting it so everyone can take advantage of it. I'm just casting it on Guy because of the target bias there. Because, well, they're not going to be attacking Maria, obviously. Ooh, weapon levels. Okay, we got our MP and HP. Oh, wow. Got a lot of uh, HP and MP gain there. But all right, so yeah, we got, yeah, one more MP game for Maria, maybe two more for Guy, and I think we'll be set and ready to go. So yeah, right down there, we got, well, yeah, let's uh, get down there. Okay, yeah, we made it. So yeah, this is the town of Basque. So let's see what they got going on around here. Hey, how's it going? Uh... Dude? Hmm. Well, in the city of Basque here, at least, yeah, the, uh, yeah, you can talk to the soldiers, but, yeah, they don't say anything either. Hmm. Well, let's see what they got to sell around here. Uh, they got the silver plate, which is a really good piece of armor, even better than the bronze plate. It's very light. It's basically just a straight upgrade from it, but I don't want to spend my money on that right now, or anything else around here at all. I mean, eventually I will want to get a silver plate, just not right now. Let's see, for weapons here, what, do we, what else do we got? Yeah, we got a tier 2, spears, swords, bows. Yeah, they got all tier 2 weapons here, I believe. So some of them could be pretty good, but I don't think they're worthwhile. They're just not that much more powerful than what we've already got. Not worth the money that it would cost there, unfortunately. Whoa, okay. Yeah, I think I heard about this guy. Hmm. I'll well, remember him for later, viewers. But, yeah, I just wanted to show you what they got going on around here, or lack thereof, in this case. Hmm, how's my HP? Okay, my HP's looking good. I just, yeah, lost a lot of MP there. That's why I wanted to walk here instead of flying over here, so that way I could get that MP gain and get the money to pay for it while I was here. But alright, so we got that. Oh, okay, never mind then. Well, at least this guy will talk to us, but apparently no one else does. Hmm, maybe they're not allowed to talk or something. Let's see, at the magic shop here, they got some decent spells. Silence is a temporary status ailment, so I'm not really a huge fan of that one for, like, crowd control. Fear is basically the same thing as Final Fantasy 1. It increases or decreases their morale stat, I think, to cause them to run away, which actually wouldn't be that horrible in this ver in this game because we don't have, like, actual experience points for killing enemies, but you wouldn't get any money drops from them, so I don't like that. Basuna is a curative spell for temporary status ailments, and Asuna is for permanent status ailments. I will be getting Asuna eventually later on, but right now, we just don't really have much of a use for it, and not to mention the money to buy it there. But what's going on at the town of Salaman to the north with Joseph? Find out next time on Let's Play Final Fantasy II! This is H.E. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day!